Oh, my bad. I didn't know there was a line. I wouldn't recommend going in there, but you better hurry up. The episode's coming on. They're coming to get you, Barbara. This time on Graveyard Cars, the A100 Little Dead Wagon makes its way through the shop. After Mark signs off on the metalwork, Will preps, primes, and paints. But what color will he paint it? What color? Same color the whole car is going black. Despite the rush for SEMA, progress in the shop continues with Mark's 1970 Charger. As the team installs a new floor pan, Mark tests Will's knowledge and his patience. He says this pan's ready to go into my 1970 Dodge Charger 440 automatic. Absolutely. Blue, blue, white top, white I, I, AMA. I track, said absolutely, like right okay. when we start. All right. Finally, new and essential parts arrive for the A100 build, but before they can be installed, Mark must decide what color the little dead wagon will be wearing to SEMA. We could fancy it up down here just because. No, no, I want a solid black. In Springfield, Oregon, Mark Warman, together with his skilled ghouls. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. Bring classic Mopar muscle cars back from the dead to look like they did the moment they left the factory floor. Because of the obvious threat, this station will remain on the air day and night. OK, Doug and I are heading to the shop right now. Right, Rooster? Uh-huh. Gonna have a good week this week? Yes, we are. What's gonna get done? I don't know. The Dodge A100 is in the paint shop with your buddy Will, and they're getting ready to do the primer on it. Because as soon as that's done, they're gonna bake it, and then we can start blocking it, and we can get it painted. Bake it? That's good. Yeah, bake it, sure. Maybe he could broil it. He could broil it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be great. That, that's gonna be great. It's gonna oh, be nice. It'll be the best. Um, Ray Barton is supposed to have our engine here this week. 923 horsepower on 93 octane fuel. That's exciting. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So if that shows up, we can start working on getting it prepared to go into the vehicle along with, what are we ha What are we gonna have to have to go along with that 1,000 horsepower engine, 923 round and up? A good rear end. That's already, that's oh. already ready to go in, yeah. Uh, the transmission. Oh. Monster transmission is just finishing the gearbox, and it's going to be here this week. Oh, that's going to be pretty. So, we're yeah, because we had it all polished out. Oh. So, well, you were there. Doug, you like shiny. It's going to be shiny. I know you like that. It's going to be nice. Right now, we have Mark's 1964 A100. We have done extensive body work on this whole thing, just on the underside alone. You know, that, that's weeks of work. The body ghouls do all the mud work on it, all the cleanup, all the grinding, the things that it takes to make it look as good on the bottom of the vehicle as it will on the outside. So all that's done. So as much as I don't want Mark to come out here and I don't need Mark to come out here, he's gonna wanna come out here to sign off on it. We gotta get it in the booth, get it primered, and right after it's primered, we can get it sanded out and then go right to painting it black. Uh, he wants to go with just a single so stage black on, on Virginia, it. Virginia, and show me a sign. Send up a signal, I'll throw you a line. Can I not do it? The stained note? glass curtain you're hiding behind never lets in the sun. I love reciting lyrics, driving down the road in your car. So yeah, it's a bit of a habit for me. Now lately, I've been listening to Billy Joel, who I call Billy Joel. Only the good die young. Is there any way when I'm doing my own? Billy Joel, glass houses. Billy Joel. No. Okay. So it's Billy. Billy Joe, <laughs> let's look at this thing. <laughs> Billy Joe. <laughs> I got all of the fabrication work done on the back half of the car. That, that was the majority of it because we had to make room for the great big tires that go underneath it, the eight and three quarter. We had to add a cross member to support the 426 Hemi that's out being built right now. You feel good about it? Yeah, we've got two weeks of work. And just so you know, I'm not gonna be as picky. It's the bottom of a vehicle, so I don't expect. Man. I had a body work pull under It picky. looks really good from here, but let's Thank just you. take a look. Flashlight. I actually had one. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. Back down in there. If we could put a little bit of panel bond, there's okay. a little bit of deterioration. No big deal. Can't see it. It's already been blasted. It's rust is inhibited, if you will. But we do need some down in that area there. 
So all of that metal work is done. We even added some gussets, some uh, cobweb type gussets, so it has a cool look to it. Look at these, gu look at these gussets, these are beautiful. My own little idea there, I won't need that from out here, I don't think. I'm I'm, go ahead, pull on that. I don't think, I mean, how much longer are you signing off on stuff? Look at that. Yeah, I know, I did it. Those are so cool. Yeah. I did that, I built Dragula. I call it Dragula. It's Dragula. No, you didn't build it, you started to. Then got no, that. I built the complete thing oh. and then I had to sell it so I could fund my show, which you happen to be riding along on the coattails of for free, so you yeah. should show some respect. I do. The whole motivation behind this vehicle is I grew up in an era where there was just cool stuff that they don't have today. I'm a big George Barris fan. All of you guys out there that have ever watched Batman, the original series, he built the Batmobile, the Munsters he built, Grandpa Munsters, Dragula, and, he, and the Munster coach. And I mean, the list is long. You'd have to spend some time. He's an amazing artist. In that era and in that spirit, a guy named Bill Maverick built out this Dodge A100. Said he put a Hemi in the back of it put fuel injection, Hillborn fuel injection on his, and he did wheel stands up and down the quarter mile with it, and it was called the Little Red Wagon, Bill Maverick's Little Red Wagon. So this is gonna be Mark Warman's Little Bed Wagon. We're gonna play a, just play off of it. It's a total homage to him. Anyway, I put gussets on it, these uh, cockroach gussets. Actually, George did. I bought them, yes. and I told him where to put them. Yes, you did do that, yes. Right at this point, you have no work into the car. I have no work into it. So who fabricated the entire thing? George. No, George did what I told him to do. I was in here doing a lot of the work myself. Ray Barton's building the 426 Hemi for it. So it's gonna be somewhere around a thousand horsepower, which is ridiculous, because it'll never even get a bite with those tires on the street, but it'll look cool and it'll sound cool. Monster Transmission down in Florida, they're building the transmission out to be able to hold that horsepower. The rest of it, we've just been piecing together a little bit at a time and, and getting our pieces ready to go on it. So once Will is all done with the paint work on it, we're able to bolt it back together and hopefully make it to SEMA this year. Okay, so you like this, the, the abrupt feel right there? It's not abrupt. Perfect. After you get it all primered out, I'd like to get it sanded out, and then I'm gonna come out and do the seam sealer myself, because no, so I like it done right. <laughs> you're gonna come out, spend two seconds on it, and pick all the and then And then you're free to go ahead and paint the bottom of the car. What color? Same color the whole car is going black. Blue, black. It kind of black where you go well, black. Well, no, I'm just, there's always nothing flashy about it. So I figure if we're putting all this work into it, now's the time to really step up what we can do and show everybody else that we're not just an OE shop. We can fancy it up down here just because. No, no, I want no. a solid black. I just want a nice solid black. What is that, 9300? Well, yeah. PPG 9300, single I, stage acrylic urethane. We could throw, yeah, we could throw, you know. I'll call Jennifer could, and she'll send me out some special paint for it. It's so. not special, it's 9300. I'm just saying that we could actually do it in a base coat, which is the 1683. Why would I want a base coat clear coat at the bottom of a car? You're not, a single I stage. am. I yeah, am. I'd like it to look good. Now, just but. I found my old box of cassette tapes from the Rolling Stones, so that got me thinking about no. I see a red truck and I want it painted black. No colors anymore, I want it to be black. You're, rid you're ridiculous. I think at the end of the day, I just like to have fun. And if it winds Will up, so much the better. That he could learn something. There's something to be learned from those lyrics. No, I, I see the girls walk by dressed in their summer clothes. I guess I'm gonna have to kind of get up to speed on what he's actually listening to so I can speak more intelligently on it. Oh, black hemi, bam a lamb. Oh, black hemi, bam a lamb. Black hemi had a car, bam a lamb. Damn thing went far. I'll have it primered this week, no problem. Sand it out next week. But before I do the actual color on the bottom, I want to get the body, get the whole body work done, and get that all primed. Otherwise, you have to really protect that black from getting oversprayed in the future. 1967 was the first year for the Plymouth GTX. Built on the Belvedere model, the GTX was born. Standard engine in 1967 when it was made was the 440 Super Commando. Optional engine was the Hemi. That's the same thing you had in 67, 68, and 69. It wasn't until 1970 that Plymouth offered the 446 barrel 390 horse engine for the first time in a GTX. That's pretty cool. All the options were available on the GTX that you would see on any of the muscle cars back in the day for the most part. This particular car is a 444 barrel. 375 horsepower U-code car. It uses an N96 air grabber hood. It's EF8 green with green interior. The spoiler on the back is not factory. It's off of a Charger Daytona and it's an eight track car, albeit far from factory. 
I still think it's pretty cool. All those things add up to why this 1970 GTX, one of 4,927, is the Graveyard Cars Corpse of the Week. So, just do all that off my memory, too, so good luck with everything. So one of the things I've tried to do on this truck is stay true to it in many, many ways. So for example, the rear brakes. These are the original brake drums. It's exactly the way it started life in 1964. Doug has been doing a phenomenal job on everything. He's thorough, he takes his time. So the work that he's doing right now is the best we've ever had turn out of here. Done one time, but one time right. I got the A100, so now it's time to get it in the paint booth and get it primer. Primer work looks pretty good, couple little things to fix, nothing major, but at this point, we're ready to block it out and get it ready for prepaint. Camera boy. Mary. Hey, Alice. Uh, so the 1970 Charger RT, uh, I bought that car as a used car, and I had a client call up, and he was very interested in the car. It's pretty amazing when you look at that it's a B7 Blue. It's a 70, so that's a good one. It's a real RT. Numbers engine, numbers transmission, fender tag. White interior. White top. Air conditioning, AM8 track. Six-way seat. It's just a really neat car. It's, it's the kind of car that is collector value, what I call a blue chip investment car. So this gentleman did want us to build the car for him and we made the deal, but subsequently he had reached out to me not long ago and said he was having some health issues. He wasn't sure he'd want to be able to ride out the, the full time of our agreement. So I just wrote him a check back for what he had invested in it. And so technically it's my car right now. Cindy, Chanel, Will, yeah. I Sorry, I've been hear, able to hear very well in there. Well, I can hear pretty well. Yeah. My understanding from our friend Bam Bam Rubble. Yeah. That's one of our body men. Bam Bam. He says this pan's ready to go into my 1970 Dodge Charger 440 automatic. Absolutely. Seven blue, white top, white interior. I, I, I track, said absolutely, like okay. right when you started. All right. What I don't see here right off the bat is weld through primer. Can you explain that to me? What only has to go in the front and the back. Yes, yes it does. Now see, he's learned that. But I don't see it on the front of the back. Right, before he actually puts it on, I want you to sign off on where we're at right now. Because the primer might hide something. Right. Okay. Can we flip it over and make sure that there's weld through primer on the back side? Well, there probably is, and if it's not on the front, there's probably none on the back. I want to make sure there's weld through primer there, so. If I told you it's not here now, it's not on the underside of you. Why, why wouldn't it be? It'll, it'll be when that thing goes there, So you're saying it's ready. not back here? I doubt it. And you're really smart. Well, wait, you said you signed off on all this. Why are you guessing? That's yeah, back there. Yeah, we can flip it over. <sighs> oh, you want to go that way, lefty? Okay. All righty, last year center. Now we got to look at there now. Yes, you're right. You're partially right. There is some weld through primer here. I don't see any where we're going to be, what do I want to say? It will. Welding through. We need weld through primer. It will be there. It will okay. be there. All right. It'll be there. What's the center measurement on the I didn't holes? measure it. Let's just see what old Mr. Tate Measure has to say. Two inch on center, huh. inch and seven eighths, inch and a quarter. Hmm. Decided, oh no, that's two and a quarter, sorry. Two and a quarter inch on center. We may flip it back over. You notice he spot welded this into place like you're mm -hmm. supposed to? Help me out, I don't see so good. <laughs> what is that thing for? The emergency brake okay, holder. Oh, it's the guide for the emergency yeah. brake? Well, what in the whiskers are these? That's where the uh, seats bolt in. Oh, we're doing those kind of seats where they bolt on the side of the tunnel? Yeah. Well, then what are these holes for? Uh, the braces go across here. Mm, no, these are actually where oh, the, seat are the seat goes. Yeah. These are the seat belts. 
That's what I said. And this little critter up here? What would you do with that little rascal? <laughs> Could it be for a speedometer guide? Let's flip it back over. I want perfect. So I'll be able to work with them on that, sign it off, and they can start welding that thing up. Okay. Everything looks like it's ready to go. Oh, he did do some spot. He did do some here, it looks like. Hmm. Yeah, there is some weld through on there, but this needs weld through on there. Okay. So why don't you uh, tell me something? Center console three-piece brackets. These are my original ones that came out of the car. How do you know those are located in the proper place that they got transferred correctly? And how do you know that they are straight up and down to the rest of the car? Because we've already put the console on there. You did? I did. You mocked the console on there? Yep. Oh, well. By all means, can I see that? Where'd you put it? It was sitting right over oh, here. Oh, yeah. thanks, Addy. Here comes Bam see? Bam. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I told you, we already did that. It's really, really close. They may end up having to shim underneath this one like a 16th. It won't matter once the carpet's on it. It actually looks pretty darn straight. So everything is welded in place. All the transfers have been made. The holes, the provisions for the plug welds are in place. Would you feel at this point that is ready to go into my 1970 Dodge Charger RT 440 automatic 727 torque flight, bucket seat, white interior, white top, white C-stripe, not a bumblebee, air conditioning, six-way seat, AM8 track car. <clears throat> when we started this, I already told you it was ready to go in. Yeah, I know, but so I've already noticed a couple of problems again. with it. You didn't so. notice any problem. Well, where's your magnifying glass? Why don't you be a lamb fryer and go grab I'm us? I'm not gonna be a sheep testicle. Would you be a little buddy and go get us some um, weld through primer and spray on that? Cause that does underlap underneath We're the... We're good. <laughs> was there a reason that you didn't want to put some on here? I just wanted to do, get your attention, I think. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good, you're learning how to lie like your boss. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Go ahead and put your stuff on. All right. I believe we are ready. You want to give him a hand putting that in? Yeah. And I will entertain the masses. All right, ghouls on the 1970 Plymouth GTX. Introduced in 1967 and left in 1971. Although there was a 72 model available on the Roadrunner, the standalone one was 1971. That was its last year. What of those years was the very first year you could get the 446 barrel engine? Was it 1969, 1970, 1971? If you think you know the answer, stay tuned after the break. I'll let you know how you did. Should have done pretty good since it was a Corpse of the Week car earlier which would just mean you either weren't paying attention or you tuned in late. Either way, it's the wrong answer. So you have to work. All right, ghouls, how did you do on that one? The question was, what was the first model year that the 446 barrel was available from the factory on a Plymouth GTX? If you said 1971, you're wrong. You're dead wrong because you weren't paying attention earlier. 71 did have a 446 barrel available in it. And of course it was the last year for the GTX standalone model. The very first year was the 1970. Now while this car does not have a V code, it is a U code, 375 horsepower, 440 Super Commando four barrel. It was the first year you could get the big bad 390 horsepower six barrel. So one of the things we're gonna do on the A100 is the truck is going red, which they're working on right now. Then we're gonna put stainless on the inside of the bed, around the wheel tubs, and we're gonna line the insides of the bed panel. And then on the floor, we're going to put oak wood, which we got from our friends at Yogi's. Yogi's. <laughs> I'm kinda of like Yogi, and you're like boo boo. So all right, here we go. Our little friend Yogi. If you wanna open that, the ends of that. So this is gonna be our hardware. Poor cousin Dougie. <laughs> When Dougie was about 19 years old, a friend of his bought a brand new Suzuki RM370. <laughs> it's a fast, 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 fast bike. 
Uh huh. Now Doug, when he was a kid, he took off across the field one day on that RM370 and hit a little berm. He flew 20 or 30 feet in the air, came straight down and did a pile drive with his head into the ground and then just flopped over. He got up, the motorcycle was running. The motorcycle was still running, am I right about that? Yes. Motorcycle That's was still correct. running. As soon as he picked it up, the motorcycle died, right? Yeah. So he had to push it home. I need he, a pair of pliers. Mark. He got home. Well, go get him. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'll finish this story my way. I mean, truthfully. Yeah, I, yeah. just hold that. Hold that thought. Okay, I won't tell him the rest of the story. So as soon as he take, takes off, pushes the motorcycle back home, he gets home and he's sick to his stomach. And he starts throwing up, in case you're wondering, that's called a concussion. Doug decides, man, I don't feel good, I better take a nap. That's exactly what not to do when you have a concussion. So he went to sleep, woke up the next day, and he's never been the same. Okay, so like you that. say whatever you want, but something wrong. Hold that thought. Oh, hey, Doug. Hi, Mark, I got some flyers. Good, I told the rest of the story. They'll come in really handy. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, that's nice. Cannot wait to put that on. Wow, it's all polished. That's kind of beautiful. Uh huh. You guys see that? It'd be beautiful. It's like a truck bed. Awesome. Floor, huh? Well, I didn't get to hear the story. I had to go look. For oh, it's, it's just what happened is when you knocked yourself out on that motorcycle and you went home and you started feeling sick. So instead of going to the doctor and staying awake, which is what they say to do in the event of a concussion, you went ahead and took a nap all night, right? I was tired. Didn't you, feel good. You slept all night, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sure. How'd you feel the next day? Great. Different? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who knows what you would have been if you hadn't been in that accident? You could be, you could have solved cancer. A motocross racer. Or a motocross racer, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're the same thing. Guy that solves cancer and a motocross racer, yeah. On the A100, you know, the intention was to paint it black. Then halfway through the build, he completely stops, changes his mind, and now we're going back to the original look, which was my original thought, which he said was a horrible idea. Um, it would have looked awesome at the show black, no problems at all, but red was a, the right way to go, and I'm glad we stuck with it. So I have about three quarters of A100 painted, the cab, a bedside. Um, I know a lot of times you'll just paint the whole thing, but when we are, it's such a time crunch this year, it's real time, we're that far behind, so if it's ready, I just paint it. Summer of 71, you're doing good. You got a good paying job, you got your steady girlfriend, life is great. You're looking for a car to go cruising with your buddies. You have the choice between a 1969 Plymouth GTX with a 426 Hemi, a four speed, and a 410 Dana rear axle, or a 1969 and a half Roadrunner, 446 barrel four speed fiberglass liftoff hood. F6 green is the original color. Which one? would you pick? Go to graveyardcars.com, cast your vote for which one you like the best, and we will announce it on our Facebook Live next week. So far, Mark signed off on the A100's metalwork. Will primed the little dead wagon and began the paint. Cousin Dougie built out the rear brakes. And Mark and Dougie unboxed some critical pieces for the A100. Still to come, the ghouls install the new floor pan in Mark's 70 Charger. Will blocks, paints, and clears the little dead wagon before moving it into assembly. Finally, the most critical piece to the A100 build is unboxed. Well, we don't usually mess around with the hypo stuff, but that's crazy. The custom-built Ray Barton Racing 426 Hemi. So I want to talk about the dash and instrumentation area of the 1970 to 1974 E-Body. All of them, except for the 1970 Dodge Challenger non-rally instrument cluster, all use this type of heater control and radio surround bezels. 
They reside right underneath the instrument cluster. If you're on the left-hand side, I'm speaking backwards, your heater control switches would be in here on your left-hand side. And on your right-hand side, your radio would protrude through here. If you have an AM8 track, which is available only in 70, this drop-down is the provision for that lower part of the deck to come protruding through. And this hole right here is what accommodates the selector to go from track to track. Take a look at these two units. The one above has the correct texture on it. It's in nice shape, it's shiny, it looks the way it's supposed to. The one on the bottom, while it's not broken, is missing all of its texture. If you look carefully here, you can see me flaking it off. That texture comes off over time and it begins to look like this one right here. So when it comes to doing a rally instrument cluster conversion on your 70 to 74 E body, or if you're just restoring one, you're gonna wanna replace these parts. It's easier and it's cheaper to buy the new ones versus sending this out and having it replated. Because these are perfect reproductions of the originals, but they already have the chrome work. They already have the highlights with the white. They're new plastic, not old brittle plastic that's prone to break. And now you know a little bit of something about e-body instrument cluster bezels. Dash bezels. Surrounds. Tony calls them dash trims. I don't know why. But see, he wrote it right here, dash trim. I don't think Chrysler called it that. Right now, I'm really far behind on the A100, so any parts and pieces that I can get together, since Doug doesn't have a lot going on, and I give them all to him so he can start the sandblasting process. Now that I got the hinges back, I can check that off the to-do list and I can get them painted and move forward with A100. We built this A100 in real time. It's been a lot of late nights. It's been every day of the week for the past few months. If there's something I can paint and get it curing, I'll do it. So, you know, I painted the cab. Uh, while that was drying, I jumped onto a bedside. Whatever needs to go red, I, that's how we kind of had to do this. So the whole truck was kind of done in parts and pieces, just so that way we can get it put together and get it delivered on time. You know, when I paint the doors and hinges, it's pretty much the same process as when I do the car. Only thing a little bit different is you have to take into consideration your panel painting the whole car. So you just got to be very thorough. If you put seven coats on that cab of that red, which is a very transparent color, which I did, you make sure that you put seven coats on, the, on those doors. So the only thing that's critical is just having that number in your head and going through that whole process. So when it's actually all bolted together, everything matches correctly. Um, I got the inside of the bed completely painted black, came out great just like we were hoping. Now that that's done, I can jump over and wrap up the paintwork on the last bedside. The 1970 Plymouth GTX looks very similar to a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner. A little different grill, headlight doors, trim, tail panels treated a little bit differently. True or false, the GTX is built on the Roadrunner's platform. If you think you know the answer, stay tuned after the break and I'll let you know how you did. All right, my ghouls, how did you do on that one? And I learn a little bit about the 70B bodies. If you guess that the 1970 GTX was built, was created from the Roadrunner platform, you'd be incorrect. It was built on the original base model Plymouth Belvedere. Would have had the first two digits of the VIN number as RL. Then you move into the RM cars, second digit being an M guaranteed you you had a Roadrunner. If you went to an RS, you had the GTX. 
That's what the gentleman's muscle car's first two digits of the VIN was. And just additionally, if you were to have a sports satellite in 1970, it would be an RP for the premium price class. So, class is adjourned. Now that all the pre-paint -pre work is done, it's time to get it all blocked out, sanded, and ready for final paint. Now that the truck's all blocked out, it's time to roll it in the booth and get the final paint work done. Uh, now that I got the color all laid out and it looks amazing, I can jump in there and get the clear coat all done. I'm going to let that cure for a little bit. Once that's done, I'm going to start the cut and buff process and then get it over here for assembly. Will, I have a question for you. Just getting ready to put this in. You did really good on the tutorial earlier. Uh, this big old ugly thing here, what do they call that thing? The torsion this bar cross member? Torsion bar cross member, that's right. If you know the answer, just shoot it right out. I there. just did. Okay. But you get mad when people my finish cousin your sentence. Remember? That was from my cousin Vinny when he was you talking about the dirt on the screen. And he said, and what do we call these little things with leaves all over them? Bushes? Yeah. Uh, what is this right here? It's a rail. What? It's a frame rail. It's frame rail. Is it a right or a left frame rail? Go ahead. Right. Yeah, very good. Very good. And then what do they call this little critter over here in the corner? That little fellow. I don't know what that what do we call is him. Called. Okay, we call him a baffle. Okay. Yeah, right hand toe baffle. So that's okay. Um, so this is the torsion bar cross member. The torsion bars actually go through here all the way up to the front and intersect with the lower control arm. And then the bar twists like this. That's what makes the front suspension on a Mopar. Doesn't use a coil over shock at the front. A lot of times, this is rotted completely out. Half the cars out back, they're rotted completely out. This one is super nice. So you see that it's got black stuff down in there. That's an epoxy that we put over the bare metal to keep it from rusting. And the gray is a weld through primer we were talking about. Because we're going to bring that panel in that's got holes in it. We're going to set it down here. And then we're going to fill those holes with weld. So you can't get in between there once that panel's down and treat that weld, you can't protect it. So this stuff will burn away and then it'll shrink back over the weld. That's the point of it. These are the seat reinforcement brackets. We reuse the originals, although we did get a set. We always do, in case you need them. These were in really nice shape, so we're gonna reuse them. This panel is referred to as the inner rocker panel. So it's the opposite version of the one you see on the outside of the car. This is the inner one. This is the rear step well for the right-hand side and the rear step well or foot well for the left-hand side. These were in good shape, so that's why you see the word save. So when they bring that panel in here, they've got to go up in the front, tuck it under here because it goes under here, and then it will lay down all the way up to the firewall. It intersects with the firewall. Once we have it basically in place, bam, bam, I'm just going to come through starting at 12 o'clock, right in the middle at the top, and he's going to put in screws to fasten that floor as tight as humanly possible against these rails, against these seat reinforcements, against this frame rail, against this before he begins plug weld. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and put the floor pan in. <clears throat> but actually, get over there and sit down, princess. I'll hand it to you. <laughs> what do you mean, princess? Well, just, you, you're just very fragile little fella. That's I'm not I'm fragile. You're very fragile. I'm not. Oh, you're the most fragile guy here. There you go, Eric. <laughs> There you go, princess. Forward, back, chuck under. Nice. There you go. All right. Here we go. Beautiful. All right. Will, good job. Getting a little better all the time. Getting to a point where I can sign off on my my body shop, so I don't have to be here all the time. Because You're not here all the time. I'm here all the time. I will let you guys get back to what you were doing. <laughs> camera boy one, camera boy two, good job. I will be up front. <clears throat> I'll just walk out all cool. I don't know. I'll act like I heard something. What? Did somebody say? The first goal is to make sure the mating area 
where the step well meets that new floor pan are tight. You don't want gaps in there and fill those up with weld. You lose your strength. They need to be sandwiched tight. So they're gonna use a floor jack, a two by four, and press that floor pan up against the weight of the car, up against those step wells. Once that's tight and where it's supposed to be, they'll use set screws in there, self-tapping screws to hold it together. The same thing goes at the torsion bar cross member area, except in this case, the pan is coming down to meet it. And if you look, you'll see that that cross member area marries tightly against that floor before they set their first screw in. At the front, where it intersects with the firewall, again, very crucial. You want those two uh, areas, those two flanges, tight. So they take their time, they work it, they caress it, they hold it in place with vice grips until everything's sorted and lined like it's supposed to be. Then they can do their self-tapping screws. After that, they begin the spot welding, the MIG welding, the plug welding to get everything into place. Now that they have the floor pan installed in my charger, Will can get the A100 over to the assembly shop. I'm excited to get this rolled over here because I am the paint and body side, so our part is done over there. Um, I'm still gonna help out over here, but the problem we're gonna run into is Mark said everything's been pre-fit, this thing's just gonna fall together. He did all the, uh, the mock-up, so to speak, but he considers a mock-up. Problem is, I watched him do the mock-up. Uh, it's horrible. This thing's not gonna just fall together. So uh, I just wanna be around for all those little problems that are gonna come up. So I am standing here with the crack shot team of my best friend Dougie and Will. We are getting ready to open that pallet right there, that crate. The engine that is in there just got here from Ray Barton Racing. They built the 426 Hemi that's going in the little dead wagon. So we went to Mark a year ago with a plan. Uh, he signed off on it, wanted to do it, and then put it on the back burner because we always do a pull through. Uh, six months went by. You know, we said, hey, should we get going? No, no, we're good, plenty of time. Uh, Will's a liar and a fat mouth. I never got cold feet, I never delayed anything. See, I have a method behind everything that I do. I had to get the truck set up. I had to cut the frame in. I had to do all the modifications, pre-fit the eight and three quarter rear end underneath it with the ladder bars. Make sure all the provisions are ready for finesse work once Will gets done painting it. Now to him, because that took me several months to do, he thinks I was dragging my feet. I wasn't dragging my feet, I was perfecting, all right? That's what it's called, it's called perfecting. We're gonna uncrate the 426 Hemi right now. Take a look at that, we've gotta marry it up to the transmission, which also just got in from our friends at Monster Transmissions. Are we ready? Ready. Let's do it. They have already ran this on their dyno, down there at Ray Barton. And would anybody care to guess what the horsepower output of this bad boy is? Being it's a 426, I'm gonna guess 914. Okay, so you got the memo. 914 horsepower That's what I just said. on pump gas. I just said that. I know. Try to. I can't okay. do it. Okay, <laughs> lift that bad boy off of there. Okay, there's the top. Oh, mm, mm, mm. Oh my. Come on, Doug. It's got Ray Barton valve covers. Can I can't. Lift that side off, Mary. Does he nut? Oh boy, holy cow, look at that. They didn't send me any pictures of it done. Wow, look at that. Well, we don't usually mess around with the hypo stuff like that, but that's crazy. Look at that, wow. Well, Holly provided the carburetors. I believe they are dual 780 Hollies on an 871 blower shop polished aluminum blower. Mopar Performance 426 Hemi block. This is a second generation real stuff. What do you think of that? Pretty awesome. What's that gonna look like in there? Pretty amazing. Like a Hot Wheel? Like a Hot Wheel. <laughs> well, there, got all the linkage hooked up. Oh, oh it's whoa, brand new. Yeah. yeah. You know, normally I'd be just jumping out of my skin with excitement on this thing, but there's a lot of pressure because the seam is coming up. So I gotta keep grounded and just keep my eye right on the, on the trophy at the end. Fantastic. All right. So what does he have, I wonder, in here? And nice Ray Barton shirt in XL. I'll be wearing that. <laughs> Spec sheet. 
I was wrong. Holy cow. 924 horsepower. 923. 23.7. Doesn't matter. Close enough. That is going to be awesome. I, don't, I think this will just lift off of there well, because it on, has hold screws. On, hold on. Oh, God. I, I don't need to be so. Oh, you're okay. Uh, you can be so. Yeah. Um. Where are the screws over there? Nope. So, are you ready, Mary? Uh, now, lift it up, Alice. I want to show everybody. Come on. Seriously, Yolanda, I want to show them. Latoya, Jessica, Veronica, Cindy, Sandy, Mindy, Mandy, Andy, Brandy. Hey, Will. No, yeah, what's that up? In oh, it? yeah, hey, All let's right. just lift that right Sounds off. Sounds good. Okay. Oh, wow. I had polished a case, a 727 shorty case, sent it off to the guys at Monster Transmission down in Florida. They did a beautiful job. I'm excited to get it opened up along with the crate, find out exactly what we have, what we're gonna need, because even though I'd love to be dancing around singing about how awesome it is to have this stuff, there's still gonna be a hundred things that need to be found and sourced last minute to be able to get it in the truck and get it running under its own power. I believe it's a 3500 stall converter. I'll double check, but I believe that's the case. That way it can be up to around eight or 900 horse before it engages and flips the truck over backwards. It's gonna be the fastest. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna die. It's <laughs> momentum. Ooh, look at that. Beautimus. What is that? I guess it's a factory marking, huh? Crazy. Wow. Boy, that is gorgeous, isn't it? I believe you're gonna see one of the most amazing throwbacks to one of the coolest trucks ever built and brought to you by your friends at Graveyard Cars. Well, and Ray Barton Racing and Mopar had something to do with it. PPG gave us some paint. Uh, Mo Monster Transmission built. I'm not taking all the credit. There were a lot of people involved. I'm just My friend Ron Jenkins gave me a bunch of the suspension pieces for the back of it. Basically, I didn't do anything. Rooster, how'd we do, buddy? We did good. We did good. What yeah. we get done? What we get done is we tell everybody what we got done. We're gonna pop a wheelie. We're gonna pop well, a wheelie. We're not gonna pop a wheelie yet. Yeah, no. We got the primer work done on the A100, and we got it painted. Will did. My we, good friend Will's Will? our painter. He's our painter. Yeah, that's your good friend Will. Oh, good. He's now, the best. What? Yeah. <laughs> did you notice the uh, all the little <clears throat> cobweb designs I welded in there? Pretty cool. You thought I was crazy back in the day? Yeah. Taking my time, getting those little things welded in. Little details like that? Little details like that looks wow. pretty cool. We literally have just a couple of weeks before SEMA. You get Ooh. that, right? Yeah. So Ooh. a lot of, well, hate to surprise you with that. We've only been talking about it for five months, so I know it can be still a Well, surprise. I'm a little slow. That's okay. What do you think of the Ray Burton I love it. I love it. 923 so cool. horsepower, polished dual Holly 780 carburetors. The blower shop supplied an 871 fully polished supercharger. Absolutely gorgeous. Got all of our Milladon pieces on there. Awesome. Monster transmission, beautiful, ready to go back on. What do you think is going to happen the first time we fire that vehicle off? It's gonna make a lot of noise. Gonna make some noise because yeah. we're going with hand-built Zoomy headers. Cool. Yeah, we did good. Yeah. All right. Did great. It's gonna be exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Anxious to get to work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going home now. We are. Yeah. Already? This is the end of the week. Oh, we're just kind of wrapping it. You're thank welcome. you. I'm ready. No a problem. long week. No problem.